any occasion to sit in this room, whether it's through a recording or just talking, is a complete treat for me. It's always an honor to be in his presence. And in Umam, Qbayri, Sunday evening, I wouldn't actually want to spend my weekend evening in any other way. And the good news is, it's the first time, Mary Jo, we do an episode together. It's the third that Monica and I have shared, but you are the special guest today. <laughs> For good reason. Uh, I think it's a week ago today, last Sunday, Monica and me, in a tent, in Marim Khayyad, I was trying to honor Lukman my way. It was the final day of a three-day event, the second anniversary of Lukman's passing. Two days earlier, we're here, we're in your lovely garden, and there's an award being handed out to you, the Lukman Steam Prize, which I thought was a perfect occasion to discuss what it means to you and the wider terrain of expression, journalism, freedom, and investigations. And somehow, I think all of those topics feed their way into your very important piece it was published a year ago. If I'm not mistaken, February 3rd, 2022 is exactly. when it was released. Yeah. Exactly. And the reason I know that is because I'm in it. <laughs> I remember the exact date, <laughs> and you reminded me that I was in it. So I did my own research, and I remembered you reaching out for it over a year ago. So let's dive deep into this piece, what it means to you, Mary Jo, what the wider work means to you, Monica. And I'll start by offering my own interpretation of what's happening right now. It's a week later, after the second year anniversary. Remove the earthquake, because that's an unexpected tragedy. Remove that for a moment. The feeling inside, for me, is every anniversary, there's an upswell of emotion. Good and bad. Bittersweet. There's love in the air. There's a lot of magical words spoken. There's a lot of eloquence. And then, there's a sadness that creeps in to me. And that's from my side. From my own life, nearly 10 years on, Every anniversary is all of those emotions combined together. But there is a darkness that creeps in in the days after. And I'm wondering if you feel the same way right now, a week afterwards, whether or not your mission and your feelings are positive or negative, how you're, how you're coping with this. Because for me, it's not an easy chapter. Every anniversary has its downfall. So maybe I can start with you, Monica. Eh, no, you're right, and um, it's a mixture of feelings, I would say, and um, maybe we were also so busy with, because, I mean, we, we wanted to organize an event, and this year we didn't organize only the commemoration, but we had this three days event with the Lukman tent, uh, which you just mentioned. So there was a lot of organization and the organization keeps you also busy. Mm. I mean, you don't really have time for yourself and um, you want that everything is happening well. So yes, I agree to you. I mean, um, the real emotion comes the moment you are alone. And, uh, and uh, for me, it started, it really, it started on Monday. And um, yeah, and you are somehow left with this question also, apart from all the, the sadness, but you are also left with this question, what is possible to do if you want, huh? and uh, where you could do more, where really what is possible to do that this crime, this execution doesn't go unpunished. And I remember, uh, I mean, I had the same feelings I had last year, and um, 
I was extremely glad about the article Marie Jo was just publishing because I felt this was, and I'm talking one year ago, that really this article was a push forward, uh, revealing certain, uh, certain points and uh, really giving our investigation a kind of push. I mean, this year I'm, uh, I'm glad in the sense of giving a push. I'm really glad that Russia, Lukman's sister, translated the text into Arabic mm. so it will reach a wider public than mm. only with English, sorry, but uh, than sure. only with English and French. And um, yeah, but I completely <coughs> agree. I mean, um, the sadness, the questions, they are really starting the moment you are alone and in a way the commemoration is over. Thank you for letting me ask you this because I felt that you felt the same way. And Monday I decided not to contact you. Uh, I wanted to reach out to you for something. I waited until Tuesday. And I think there's a way of these shared gatherings bring out the best in us. And the words that were spoken those three days were really beautiful. And it's a small country. So when I see Dima Sadek getting a prize or Mary Jo getting the prize, these are not strangers. These are friends. But then there's a hurt that creeps in after. And I agree, I agree it's the loneliness. Hundreds of people giving you attention that's overwhelming. And then silence. So I'll break the silence right now with you, Mary Jo. I want to say that in terms of all the articles that I read about Lukman, uh, all the analysis, let alone the in-depth reporting, yours is obviously the one that stands out. And uh, it's straight to the point. You documented the whole lead up to the assassination and the immediate aftermath in a way that I think all of us should hold on to because this should be done by the state should be done by a judicial authority, it should be done by an investigative judge. Instead, we're left to a journalist doing her job. I'll emphasize, you're not just an investigative journalist, but I think your work when it comes to this terrain stands out. So I want to go into this with you. May I ask, do you feel like this type of work is filling a void that none of us should be doing? Well, <clears throat> um... In a way, yes, and in a way, no. Uh, in a way, uh, yes, because personally, when I was uh, working on the story and I was investigating, um, I was asking myself till where I could go, you know, because I could go much, much deeper than that. Uh, be but at some point, I said to myself, I'm not a police. Yeah. I'm not a judge. I'm not an investigator. I'm mm -hmm. a journalist, but... So I also have to be careful. It's not my job. And it's also a sensitive country, mm. as we know. So in a way, no, it's yes, as you say, it's not uh, our responsibility. But it's important to do this type of journalism work um, in Lebanon, because this void you're talking about gives the space to all sorts of um, false information, a myth, and uh, my uh, article was a, a war against that, actually, because oh, yeah. uh, most of the political assassination are justified in a way which is completely nonsensical in Lebanon. People always, you know, they give you the reasons why the person has been shot or how he got killed, because there is a void. Yeah. And our responsibility as journalists is to give facts. And there are facts. This man this intellectual, Lokman Slim, he was killed in a very methodical way, very organized. And uh, this article uh, had the purpose to show that and to say, you see, uh, it's not like uh, some, uh, someone, uh, I don't know who killed him. Uh, it's, it's not a, a stupid story, sorry to say that. To say that. It's, it was not a spontaneous act. It's not a spontaneous act. And uh, it's organized and it's intentional. And, uh, and he was trapped. What I appreciated about it is that it sticks to facts. There's absolutely no speculation or fiction hinted at. 
you remove a lot of the BS that was circulate, circulating in the days thereafter, you cut to the chase. And what, while you're doing that, you're offering a very short story that's roughly 24 hours long of a man's last hours. But I also appreciated that you took us back to his own father at the end. It's almost mm-hmm. like bringing this whole story full circle with, uh, if I'm not mistaken, it was Kamal Mruwe's assassination and Mohsen Slim is the lawyer for that assassination and he's able to bring those criminals to prison to serve a sentence unlike today i thought it's also a way it's like a tip of the hat if you will to a state that once did its job a state that could pursue justice to a point and here we are in 2021 where it's impossible to imagine that in the foreseeable future yet you're still there doing your job so I have to emphasize this piece. It's well written. I'm glad it's translated into all three languages. We were joking earlier. I can improve my French <laughs> and my Arabic. Um, maybe I can ask you both this question. I'll start with you, Monica. Um, a talented investigative journalist, a civil society that shows up, uh, a lot of friendly diplomats that offer their condolences, a lot of determination to seek accountability and you eloquently push the discussion towards a UN backed investigation and I sense from you that you're seeing what we can do here as curtailed and you're looking at outsiders for perhaps support and I don't want to speak on your behalf but I'd like to take the discussion there because I felt this, that there is a, it's been two years and patience is over. So I'll let you add to that if you feel this way. Yeah, I mean, uh, let me say it in a different way. Um, Lokman and I, we have been working through Umam on political assassinations. Mm. And all of a sudden, I'm on the other side, if you want. I mean, I was on the side of collecting uh, open sources with Lukman, of course. Uh, We were analyzing and, 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 putting this on a website, Memory at Work, and all of a sudden you move, uh, you're not anymore the observer, but you're Mm. in the middle of it. Mm. And, um, but through the fact of working on Lebanon's warload and history or working on political assassinations um, doesn't give a lot of hope and um, that really justice could be done in Lebanon. And therefore, really from day one, I have been calling for an independent international investigation the same day when Lokman was found. And, um, I mean, of course, uh, I'm going to the... We have still a local investigation. I'm attending the hearings. I hope that something might come out. Mm. (coughs) But I don't want to reduce it to this. And this from day one. And an international (coughs) fact-finding mission, for example is not replacing the local investigation. I mean, it's an addition and um, which can provide evidence. So um, I'm not saying, I mean, hopefully even the local investigation could make sense at one point, even if I'm not very hopeful. But in addition, I would like to see an international fact-finding mission. And as there have been more and more voices which have been calling for the port explosion for an international UN fact-finding mission, and as there might be the possibility that the assassination of Lukman or the assassination also of Joe Bejani or Rejeli might be linked in one way or another to the port explosion, I'm asking today the international community to at least to integrate at least 
these three assassinations in a possible fact-finding mission. And But for me, the most important is really only an investigation, investigation can prove um, if there is a link or not. In case that there is not a link with one of the assassinations, then nevertheless, the assassination should be investigation, investigated with mm. link or without link. Let's go down that road as much as we can in terms of the role of a journalist sprinkling facts in a report, in a, in a very important report. But when I say sprinkling, I mean a lot of what Monica hints at or alludes to is actually documented in this. But in terms of offering the political motive or trying to go down that road, in my mind, that's the kind of analysis that only an investigation can offer. Meaning the facts are there. Uh, there's a very courageous reference at some point in your writing, Mary Jo, where you're acknowledging things that many journalists shy away from in this country. Meaning you're safely discussing the role of Hezbollah in this country. And it comes out in this report. But it's clearly not your job to offer your insight into Hezbollah's motives or why Hezbollah does not target certain individuals or why it perhaps does. I don't see that as your role. But do you share a sentiment that this is well beyond the role of a writer or a journalist or a reporter, that that kind of obligation is still something the state should be doing? And when the state doesn't do it, there's an indication that international involvement is necessary because I can see that both of you are doing your job to the fullest extent and then two years later we're talking about it we're not seeing criminals behind bars so as much as you can say it's a loaded question but how your role fits into this uh, I think that um, as a journalist um, I stick to fact to evidence so um, from my end I was not investigating uh, who killed Lokman Slim. Mm. Uh, as I told you, I was trying to um, fill a void which gives um, proof mm. that uh, there are evidence, there is evidence. Um, we can definitely uh, know who is behind it, but um, it's not done. Yeah. Um, especially that if we go back to the fact in the beginning, um, it was the crime was done in the south of Lebanon. Mm -hmm. So uh, of course we know it's a region controlled by Hezbollah. Though there there is international uh, institution as the UN, mm -hmm. but till now they did not cooperate uh, concerning this. And sorry to interrupt. I like that you emphasize that they are even acknowledging that something like surveillance, they don't monitor beyond their own compound. So you're even indicating there that the, the people you would turn to are not capable of doing more. So, so sorry, I interrupted. Yeah, yeah, you. exactly. The UN says we don't monitor outside our own building. Yeah. The, the only thing that matters is the security of the people, the staff inside, yeah. and we don't monitor the streets. Mm -hmm. Fair enough, maybe. Um, the thing is that um, there are cameras on the roads, all the way. So uh, there are a lot of gaps in this investigation. We have videos that are missing, mm. which really could show faces of people who killed, who could really show um, also the, the crime scene. Yeah. It, it might be possible mm. that we have it. Yeah. We don't know. So, But we know that there are videos, but there are gaps. Yeah. So as we know, during investigation, the 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 the, the, the the how do we say the renseignement um, the malumat the malumat the they're the one who intelligence. the intelligence, the intelligence. Yeah. they're the one who can they will give you what they can give you yeah. and the judge it's finished his work is what they gave you yeah so uh, and this is what I wanted to show that uh, there are gaps and it's it's not complete and how can and it's also a lot of Questions: Can we trust a local investigation in this case? How much the families could do mm -hmm. uh, if uh, if the, the the game is over? Let's say it's like the game is over from the beginning. Yeah. Um, but so concerning your question, uh, I think that if a journalist has the evidence of, of who is behind this crime, 
<laughs> he could go for it. But uh, you were present during uh, the, the ceremony of the second anniversary and I, and I had the speech. I, I, I said that from my end, I was not fearless when I did this work. Um, I was not fearless. I was not fearless, no. Mm. I, we mm. cannot say that... I'm very, very proud to have got an award which is written on it, Zero Fear, Soferhof. This is, I think, we should all go toward that. But till now, it's complicated. So um, it's a country where you can be killed. I can be killed, you can be killed. And all the families experience, experience it. Uh, your murder never face justice. So you ask yourself, why am I doing this? If I point this or that, does it, I mean... <laughs> you know, I, actually, maybe we can take it in this direction a bit. I'm glad you bring this up naturally. Um, I noticed even at the end of the piece, uh, the people that you're speaking to are relatives of the deceased. Whether it's Rasha, Abir, uh, Giselle Khouri is mentioned. Mm -hmm. uh, and she's very straight to the point in terms of acknowledging who the killers are and knowing that it's not her time, meaning that justice is delayed. The wife of the late Samir Asir. And then I come up also as the son of an assassinated individual. I think, and this may tie into why international uh, action, to me at least, is the preferred option. I think none of us are under threat. Um, and I do appreciate anyone that feels that they are because it means that they're doing their job. So when you said fear, uh, you're not fearless, that sounds to me like you actually are fearless because it means that you've gone to a point where you're uncomfortable, but you're still pushing forward. My understanding of this whole disaster is that we can talk about this report, we can talk about all the details in it too. Once we do something about it, we're under threat. If we're not doing something about it, or if we're not able to do something about it, which I think is where we live, incapable, we're not under threat. And I think that's why you can talk to the relatives of these people that talk about it, but you can't talk about those that are killed because they did something about it. Now that's a very heavy burden on both of you. Challenge me if you see it differently. No, but again, I bring back the, my position as a journalist, but to, to be really uh, rational, I think that this sorry, is... Sorry, let no. me, I'll interject. You're able to offer hour by hour detailed descriptions of cameras in Khalde, of monitoring of the number of cars that followed, of even the very tragic fate, the last seconds of this man's life. But that's not a threat to them. That's just a description. It's the written word without action. That, that's kind of where I'm trying to see whether or not we're not really a, a threat or a challenge. It, it, it depends. Um, should, should, are we supposed to be a threat as a journalist? Maybe. But in this case, the country is missing structures for that. Personally, I can say that my experience is that I was very... Uh, alone when I was doing mm, this work. Mm, yeah. So I was working at that time for Lorient Le Jour, which has, I recently uh, left as a publication. And uh, I was hired to do investigations. But we can be uh, honest, the, pap the paper doesn't have the, the experience for that. Uh, you know. Mm. And I always have in mind, uh, I don't know if you saw this movie Spotlight, where you have uh, this team of journalists in the yeah. US, in Boston, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, yeah. and they... Uh, so this is like the ideal thing you could uh, dream about. Mm. Uh, they are a group of journalists. They work on a topic without names. And one by one, they're going to make a system fall. It was mm. the church there for the ped yeah. pedophile. Mm. And so we don't have this in Lebanon. And I think that we should... It's important to invest in that, actually. Mm. Daraj is a very important media today for investigation. But uh, I realized that it's mostly criminal... Um, financial crimes that they investigate yeah, yeah. and less uh, political assassinations. Mm. And it's the same for me for, as uh, for the families of the victims. I really think they should unite to be a, a very important um, force, a threat. It's the same for journalists. We need to have pools of journalists. They can work on mm. cases like that. But alone, 
it's complicated. Let me do a mm. quick calibration. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Nobody wants to turn it political. I mean, the article is political. I'm talking now about our uh, about what is happening with the local investigation. I mean, I spent eight hours at the intelligence, and um, not one political question was asked. And uh, I mean, I was asked if Lokman had a gun in the sense did, did he commit suicide with six bullets. And um, I mean, there was all this personal kind of questions, but no one asked during eight hours one question about all the threats he has been receiving. And I will only quote two highlights. One highlight was the al Akbar campaign of 2012, when al Akbar really... Um, published a, a whole series of hate articles against the independent Shia and calling them the first the Shia of Feldman, then they became the Shia of the embassy, which meant the American embassy. And of course, another highlight, and I mean it was a call for murder, and another highlight uh, was, of course, when the hub in two, December 2019 was burning and we found here all the threats. So there is a whole, I mean, I'm on purpose, I'm mentioning two examples, and between these two examples, we have seven years. So uh, what I want to say is uh, the threats, there's a whole history of threats. And then, I mean, I'm sitting at the Malumat for eight hours and nobody wants to turn anything political. I can somehow say the intelligence, to a certain extent at least, they have been doing their work. Let, let me, oh, sorry, just sorry, just yeah. to say that yeah. this yeah. completely confirmed that it is political, actually. Mm. Because if the questions are that shallow, yeah. it's because it's like a theater play. Mm. Yeah. Uh, and a, a, a judge confessed to me, he has important files in his hands. He told me, I told him, there is no accountability, you know that. And he said... For non-political crimes, there are, there is. Right. I actually remember. Yeah. So even, so he yeah, confessed. There's a reference to cards that, missing, and you actually, in the article, you even allude to it in a way that they have they're 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 stating their limits without stating. Exactly. It's word like for word. You, yeah. you you they give you the card, but some are missing, so you can't yeah. you can't play the game. Right. So in a way, and I think that we don't know what are their reasons, but uh, these judges. They freeze the fire. I mean, they can't. They don't continue. They 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 can't go on. I don't know what's the reason. I don't know if they receive threats or not. But mm -hmm. the fire remain, and the question, the shallow questions, are the only one who remain. And let me ask you, Mary Jo. I'll start with you. Let's assume that you've done your job to the fullest extent possible. I can't imagine an investigative report coming out in Lorient Le Jour that's braver than this one. I, I mean, maybe later in the conversation we can get into any po possible pushback you had, but it doesn't matter. It's done. It's published. We all read it. Mm. So I think I can't see a better version of this. And Monica, I don't think of anyone that has been more determined and more principled in the last two years in seeking accountability, and you've been courageous in your own way, whether it's on media whether it's trying to use the Lebanese system to the fullest extent possible, whether it's having these open pleas for international engagement, and at times things that are quite brilliant where you put people on the spot, You're asking the French to do something regarding UNIFIL, confronting UNIFIL directly. You've, you've done your job, I think, the most a widow could. And I don't think anyone is to blame for not doing more. So... Is there any credence to saying or suggesting that this issue is well beyond us? Meaning a reporter indicating that there's a systemic curtailment towards justice. A widow 
obviously portraying the whole picture from threats a decade ago until his ultimate death. And nothing is done. Is, is there any role for us to play in making the case that the only example of justice in this country in modern history is the most unpopular tribunal ever delivered, the Special Tribunal for Lebanon. And the reason I'm going down this road, this to me is almost like a mini summary of their mini summary. But you're just a one woman show with your I know with you your mean. people. Yeah. <laughs> but they spent billion over a billion dollars. There's thousands of pages available. That actually led somewhere. Didn't get anyone behind bars. bars. But we can talk about the verdict. Yeah. Yeah. Do we have a role to play in this as a reporter, investigative journalist, as somebody defying fear and impunity, or even someone like me trying to expose these things? Is that our role today? Or are we better off just doing this, meaning local, 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 and then we've done our job and we can't do anything else. I'm trying to be devil's advocate here. <laughs> because I can see third year anniversary and it'll be the same conversation. So let, let me start with you, Mary Jo. I, I, I'd like to hear how you, if any of what I'm saying resonates with you. No, it, it resonates. I ask myself a lot of these questions because, uh, and it's, it's beyond that, you know, it's like always this, this opinion of Lebanon by itself. Like, is it a country? Is it a population? Everyone has its own martyr. Everyone criticizes the martyr of the other. And uh, so the lack of unity is evident for me. Uh, in a way, what we could do, because from my end, I think we represent the people and we're not judges, we're not police, we're not, is that we should, uh, people should unite. And for mm -hmm. me, uh, for example, the families of victims of political assassination they should unite. If we see in the history... Let me interrupt, Major. Unite in what? Calling for international action or just unite in terms of speaking the same language? Because I think a lot of us show up at, at these events. No, it depends. For example, the one that... Uh, I don't know for the very old one how much they, they still stick to knowing, to, to having accountability. But if they're willing, they could. Also, uh, the recent assassinations, for example... Um, Monica was talking that but she Bejani, wants to know if yeah. Bejani, Rjali, all these recent assassinations, are they linked with the port explosion? This is, in a way, a procedure that search for unity, actually. So maybe it's not the case. Maybe it's not connected to the port explosion. Mm. I don't know. But actually, the, it's, the, it's just the, the intention and uh, the Acting in this way for me mm. is very important. I think that there are a lot of families who are afraid. But I, I and feel if comfortable. they were if they were saying, Oh, they are they are oh they are doing a collective together, they're gonna file this together, maybe I want to do it this time. Maybe I'm gonna reach out and, and yeah. I feel comfortable pushing you further because I know the way you write means that there's a boldness to you. So I feel okay I can push you a bit. What does unity actually offer? Uh, um in other words, a special tribunal doesn't care if there's unity or not. Or whether actually, Saad Hadidi cares at the end. That's the son of one of those assassinations that it looked into. Saad Hadidi can live in Abu Dhabi. He can actually be out of it completely. They're going to issue a verdict into that assassination and the string of successful and attempted ones, 2004 to 2005. Unity or not, the, the functionality is there. Did you ever invite him to ask what he that he he do uh, for it? I've tried. <laughs> <laughs> I've tried. I've gotten nowhere. There's a few people that don't get back to me. He's <clears throat> he's unfortunately one. But I mean it in terms of what does unity actually offer in terms of more value to what you've done and what Monica has done. I don't know if unity plays a role in justice but there are many families who didn't even seek for justice or accountability so but that's my point let's say they don't i think the the justice uh and it's the same in every type of countries in this type of cases if the family doesn't move nothing happened i disagree so i'll play devil's advocate with you one more time <laughs> no no because i think it's this is actually important 
Um, I think justice is blind in its purest sense, meaning the victims could demand for uh, no justice. They could even side with the criminals. But justice will be served, despite what victims want. I don't think justice is the role of the victims. I think it's the role of a state that we don't have. Yeah, but you, it, <laughs> it depends who's the criminal. That's where international engagement If, gives us the opportunity, I think, I think, at pointing at the criminals that we cannot point to. I'm sorry I'm speaking over you. But no, I mean, no, it's, yeah. it, I, and I was not, re actually, I really did not want to, to blame anyone by mm. saying that if they don't seek justice, nothing happens. It's mm. actually mm. a curse, mm. really, because it's so tiring. You see, you know, years by years, I mm. can imagine how hard it is, especially that it seems so big and impossible to solve. But we, we know that when the crimes are linked to state, of course, it's not the state that who's going to move. Well, yeah, and I mean, maybe in yani, really in brackets, we were lucky that we have been working uh, against it since years against this culture of impunity. And mm. in this sense, I mean, we are, or today I am familiar with all with uh, uh, organizations working on accountability and 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 and. So in Not everybody has this chance, if you want. Mm. So uh, we have been, I mean, this is also a small, a small world. Uh, the UN uh, organizations like Human Rights Watch, Amnesty and, and Accountability now. I mean, this is a kind of small world. And if you are in it, of course, somehow it helps. And I mean, mm. uh, luckily we were in this. This is one point I would like to make. Another point is um, uh, the question of unity. I mean, um, it's Sorry, we Monica, joined. If you can talk, yeah, yeah yes. we joined recently. If I say we, I mean Russia and myself. I mean, we joined recently the manifestations which were done for the port explosion. Mm. Mm. And we joined because we felt it's really, uh, it's the same fight. Mm. And uh, the more we are, the better. And now, I mean, we are also reaching out to families of other assassinations. Mm. And uh, I mean, I, can, I cannot predict what this gives, but at least... Um, Maybe it will help that more people will speak out and uh, political assassinations, they almost became a kind of normality in this country. And uh, I mean, if more people will speak out, maybe so there something could change. And then for me, it's not only about unity uh, between families, uh, it's It's also what we are just doing now here. I mean, your father has been assassinated. You are writing about it. I mean, you, are inter you interviewed me for the article like many others. But, I mean, here we are. And um, but each of us has a part of information, let's say it like this. And putting these things, I mean, we are not doing this now here in the public, but putting these things together, because, I mean, what we are doing, we are, what we are confronted with is a kind of puzzle which we are putting together. So as more we can be, even with different backgrounds, with different connections, um, with different experiences, I mean, maybe this can also uh, lead somewhere, at least to evidence. I mean, because yeah, very clearly, uh, I'm not only sitting here and waiting for the judge to call for a hearing. Huh? I mean, I'm also trying by myself or with Russia or with friends. I'm also trying to understand what happened. Let me then ask both of you, in term, trying to bring unity and justice into a verdict because I think that's really that's the goal at the end is to have a verdict where you know who committed this crime and then that person goes to jail that's really I think that's how this should all end yeah. 
is there, and I'm trying to think of what Lukman's role is in terms of challenging impunity the way you uh, eloquently emphasized, meaning that he spent years confronting this climate of political assassinations and political violence in general. And you and Russia joining Paul and Tracy Najjar, William Noon and others from the poor blast victims, going to the judicial palace with Lukman's photo, side by side with every other person carrying a photo of a lost relative. And these haunting scenes where people are coming together. Let's say there's value in bringing the message closer. So trying to redefine the narrative that is a little more unified. Is that a better way of addressing an international audience that could be, at the end, the gatekeeper to an effective investigation? Because I think there is no shot in hell for there to be any local investigation worth anything in this country for the foreseeable future. Mm -hmm. Whether that's Tarek Bitar, who's, I think, still locked in his role, or an investigative judge that maybe you had to try to communicate with for whatever investigation, but let's say this one in particular, or any judge in this country that's supposed to do their job. I don't see it happening. No. So does unity at least, is there a goal in mind beyond, beyond yeah, coming together? Yeah, I mean, together? I agree with Marie Jo that, uh, the, well, I don't like to talk to about myself about as a victim. I really, I, I don't like this at all. But, I mean, uh, I really, uh, you have a point in the sense um, pressuring the international community to do something, I mean, requires our presence. I mean, if we are not, or if, uh, and we, I mean, journalists, mm. people sharing our ideas, and, 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 uh, if we are not calling for it, why the international community should offer it to you if nobody is demanding it? I'm, I'm, I completely so, agree. Yeah. We should give responsibility uh, to everyone in this because the normalization we were talking about, uh, Monica was saying it's normal to be assassinated. This is what we should fight, actually, by being present in protest, by writing about it, by doing shows, by uh, doing lobbying. In, in a way, nothing is permanent. This Lebanon that we witness today is not a permanent one. Mm. So we cannot just give up. Huh? Yeah. Things are going to change. And so it's, it's, it's important to fill the void, to come back to the, to the beginning of, mm. Uh, mm. of, uh, of this show. And um, we should be bothering we should be bothering people, we should be bothering institutions, we should be a threat in a way. When you write all the time about this, you're bothering, you're making it existent. If you're not talking about it, you let it die. Oh, he was killed, oh, many was, were killed bef before him. Okay, basta, we, we switch on. It's, it, it, it's, it's not supposed to be like that. The whole forces of this country should be working against this normalization of being assassinated uh, Without being, uh, no. I'm going to actually try to link this to really events on the ground today, and I, I do want to know a bit about your own personal career because it's quite profound that you're the person, and you're not here right now. You're abroad. You left Lorient du Jour. I, we can talk about it as much as you'd like, but I think it's also quite telling that it's really just you that went down this road. Uh, before that, though. I think in terms of uh, us demanding or us being exposed or having cameras on us or microphones next to us, none of that matters. I think the state should be doing its job. The state should be demanding an international investigation when it cannot do its job and that's the end of the story. We can all travel around the world and not have to do anything with Lebanon. And these courts, these cases will all happen with or without us. I think that's the goal. That's not happening. Should we, as, let's say, thinkers, writers, persuasion artists, whatever you want to call us today, should we be making that clear that the state is not there and therefore we cannot do anything about it? And I think that fits into symbolic gestures like 
friends of ours that are in Parliament right now, equally paralyzed. There's two MPs sleeping for the last three weeks or so. They're paralyzed too, and they're in Parliament. They're actually members of Parliament. They're not spectators. We voted them in. And for three weeks, they're sleeping on sofas. I think they're part of the story too. And I sense a lot of people that should be communicating this don't. That maybe they're afraid of failure. I, I think it's the role of an MP to say where their limits are. And yet you have MPs that are saying that they can do all of the above and they sleep on a sofa for weeks and mostly forgotten right now. And I worry that even us, our footprint is not really that important. I think maybe our messaging is more important. Not what we cannot do, but what we want to happen and we're not able. So, is there anything there? Because I, I frust I'm so damn frustrated at no. knowing everyone that does their job to the fullest uh, extent and this country continues to spiral. I don't see... Um, I don't really see that what I'm doing, what uh, Marie-Jo has been doing, what Russia is doing, uh, that or I, I refuse, let's say it like this, I refuse to see that I, what I'm doing has to do with the destiny of Lebanon. Mm. Because for the simple reason, mm. I mean, it's a completely failed state today, and I don't have the time to wait until it's becoming a non-failed state. It's become a state. Uh, that it becomes a state, <laughs> which is even, mm, no? Which is so higher. I don't goal. have the time. I like the non-failed yeah. states. Oh, that's just... <laughs> so I'm not, uh, I, yani whatever it's possible to do, I don't link it to the destiny of Lebanon. I see. So you see this as... In this sense, okay. I mean, yeah. uh, I see very well, as you were mentioning, I see very well where the judge Bita, who is incredible, um, nah, courageous, yani where he is standing now. I mean, I, I'm, I'm not blind. Yani, yeah. I'm following. Yeah. And, um, and therefore, again, from day one, I have been calling for an independent international investigation because I never thought that a local investigation um, could be, to say it nicely, could be enough. My grandmother was ass assassinated in this country, so I also personally had a, um, you know, a crime in my family, which was unpunished as well. My dad was seeking justice by himself at some point where people told him, uh, just <laughs> get the hell out or we're going to kill you. So this crime got unpunished. And this is how we grew up with this grandmother. Uh, so Sorry, she was a politician? She mm. was not, but it was in the beginning of the civil war. Mm. Uh, she was, uh, it's the, you know, the gold era where the communities were living with each other. So uh, my grandmother, who was a Christian, was living in areas which, which today are not anymore Christian. I mean, everybody was mixed. So we don't know what was the purpose, why. But she got killed. Um, to, co to come back to my own story, why did I write this? I think that um, I've been living in France for many, many years. And I got in Lebanon uh, again three days before the blast. Um, so, uh, so you were here, you, by chance you were here. When the blast happened. Yeah, okay. and I was, uh, yeah, I was there just to visit my family. I see. And I went to a coffee place in Gemeise and everything exploded. So suddenly I was also part of one of the biggest events that happened to Lebanon. Um, and I started working about it. And actually my first investigation were about the port, the Beirut port blast. Uh, it was also to, to point all the neglect that was happening in this, uh, in this place. Um, and then um, I think that the fact that I was abroad uh, has something to do with this. Mm. Is that maybe I'm too naive, I don't know. But I come here with a, a fresh mindset that I'm beyond all this... Uh, Calculations. Calculations or the way media analyze here the mm. information, the way 
I, I don't I don't read like that the information here. So I just read it as someone who's okay. I'm gonna search for this and write about it. And I'm very stubborn. So when I remember actually, um, I was in. France and I decided like to come back to Lebanon for good because I was working here for the Beirut board blast uh, investigation but then I was not in my mind just settled in Lebanon so I went to France to pack my stuff and Lockman Slim was assassinated and I see. So, I, so sorry you were working at Lorient de Jeux before the blast in France or that your career at Lorient begins with the blast my career in Lorient, no, it, it starts, uh, the blast uh, happened. I start to work on investigation for uh, French media about it. Oh, and then it transitions to Lorient. And Le then uh, Lorient Le Jour hires me. Oh, I, I see. go to France to pack my stuff. To come back. To come back to Lebanon right, right. for good. Yeah. And Lokman Slim was assassinated. And I remember that I was, it, it was a shock for me because I used to follow him a lot. I went all his project, the, the documentaries in France. And, uh, and this is where, I was, this is the country where you're getting back to. Oh my God, I was very down. And at that time, I did not know that I was going to work a year later mm -hmm. for the first anniversary on the circumstances I see. of his death. I see. So I think that uh, if I had the courage to work on this, it's because, as I told you, I think I, I'm beyond uh, all the um, lectures that we have um, of the Lebanese society, of the political groups, and I was stubborn. I wanted to, I wanted to, to ha give him a good story. I wanted to give him a good piece for the first anniversary, not something which was shallow. And again, I want to also, I'm very grateful that Rasha, the sister of Lokman, translated it in Arabic because... For the first time in some TVs, I saw v reports, uh, you know, simulating the crime scene. That is something I haven't seen before. Two years later, they are in the car. Lockman Slim uh, left his house at this time. He was followed uh, by five cars. And two years so that Lebanese yes. media... Uh, just and also, facts, just you know? to add, other written, uh, Arabic written media also they quoted from you. And these kind of articles we didn't have before. So, you come back to this country after the blast. You make a decision to move back to Lebanon after the blast. For every reason you should be leaving, you're coming back to this country. Three days after a visit, a summer visit, you're almost killed during the blast. Yeah. I think it's even in your Twitter bio, you say you're a port blast survivor. So it's even there, it's in your biography. Six months later, to the day, you're meeting Monica and many others gathering at this very sad occasion, and you're flying back from France and covering another political assassination in this country's history. One year later, you're writing a fantastic report on it. A year after that, you're getting a prize in his name. A Lukman Slim prize. Sifir Khof, as you mentioned, embedded on it. And then I discover you're leaving. You're not here, or you've already gone. You've already left. And I'm a bit late to the game. I thought you were just going back and forth. I did not know that you had made the decision to leave once more. So allow me to ask you, why is the most talented reporter writing on political assassinations getting a prize by this man's widow not here you said you're stubborn and you said that you came back because you felt it was right what, what are you what are you doing <laughs> well nothing is permanent when i said before <laughs> i'm taking a break <laughs> no it was uh uh there is a, a French poet, Rimbaud, he's written a very important uh, recueil of poems. It's called uh, Une saison en enfer, it's a season in hell. I've been in Lebanon for this past two years and a half, and it were, was many, many seasons in hell. Mm. Uh, not because just of what's happening, because the file I was working on were very hard. It was yeah. the, you know, illegal migrants uh, going by boats, uh, it was the Lockman Slim case, the port blast, um, the explosions in Akkar where people were burnt alive. Uh, and all these files needed to get 
justice, <laughs> uh, which I never found actually. So I'm not going to say that khalas, I gave up already. It's just two years and a half, but it was quite intense. I think it's a personal choice to take a little break, but it's not the end for me at all like concerning Lebanon. It's not the end. What is it? All se seasons in hell? What is this? Uh... It's, it's called Une saison, uh, une saison en enfer. It's oh, a season okay. in hell. A season in hell. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you've experienced multiple seasons of hell. I hope you are not gone for too long. Um, Me because, too. <laughs> yeah, because it's a treat to get to know you a bit better. It's also an honor to gauge your mind a bit. I know that I was a bit maybe... Uh, Some of the questions maybe were a bit heavy, but it's a heavy topic. It would be very odd if we were talking about Emily in Paris right now, right? Which talking, I never watched, which you but never you watched, watched it. I watched all three seasons. <laughs> I'm very proud of it, too. <laughs> um, thank you for going down this road with me, Mary Jo. Thank Monica, you. Monica, thank you for always going down this road with me in different directions, but it's a difficult journey. Um, I'll say it from my side. I don't have the rose-tinted glasses you have. What brought you back to this country and maybe the belief you had in something, I don't see it. Um, I'm closer, I think, to Monica's bleaker assessment of a failed state that is not going to improve in the near future. And I think if we have a shared mission, whether we're together or not, whether we're speaking the same language or not, whether we know each other or not, I made the decision to come here two years ago and be in the garden the morning of the assassination. But had I not, look, men's criminals should be in jail. Shouldn't matter if I'm with Monica or not. And everyone, everyone that has suffered this crime in this country, including the criminals that took your grandmother long ago should have been imprisoned. I sense these are the things that were very good at analyzing and dissecting. The answers are not here. And I think had they been here, none of us would be talking right now. We'd be doing other things. Of course. So, as I promised, I will not end it on a very bleak note. I will say that against all odds, there are beautiful people in this country. You're one of them, Mary Jo, Monica, and... And you, Roni. I, well, I don't know about that. But of course. To look, man. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you.